Hey guys, time to uh, get to riveting this vertical stabilizer up. Got all the pro parts primed. Let's get on it. So most of you already know I'm building an airplane in my living room slash small one bedroom. And I rivet up in my bedroom just because it's a little further away from the neighbors complaining. But uh, the vertical stabilizer was already built for me. Uh, previous owner of this kit already had this completed but uh, there were a couple couple dings and dangs wasn't really too happy with um, so I cut out the rear spar and ordered new skin and some new pieces and here they are all nice and primed up with some AKZO have another video about that and um, just been uh, as per the plans I started at the intersection after I got the skeleton all taken care of moving along these are uh, 426's 3.5's uh, the corner guy is a 4 and those are 470's Man, these were a pain in the ass. I had to do these like three times. Kept rolling them over. These are uh, 470-5s. Those three there. So I think I'm going to use my squeezer for that. I'm going to use my squeezer for the top rib. And I'm just going to concentrate on the spar. Then I'll... Uh, Get this closed up and uh, stick my hand in there. A little easier to show you guys riveting here than when I get the other panel closed up. And I won't be able to rivet the rear spar in because I have uh, an inspector that's going to have to come and check all the shop ends out and make sure I'm doing a good job before I get my uh, closure go ahead from the MDRA, which is the governing inspecting body here in Canada. But, uh, show ya it's looking pretty good I'm really really happy with how they're turning out I mean no real bangs in the skin so pretty pumped about that all right let's get to riveting Tungsten bucking bar, worth the money. Every now and then, make sure I'm doing a good job. I'll grab my uh, checker here. Good. Good. Nice. Tell you, riveting is really the best part, guys. It takes so long to get these parts ready. And then you finally do and I tell you they go together real quick once they've already been together about four or five times. For me this is this is where the fun is. Cool. And in case you guys are wondering, this is what I'm using. I'm using a flush set with a rubber ring 
And I tell you, I tape everything. This is just blue scotch painter's tape. But it's why I don't scratch the outside of that skin at all. It is great. And it takes a second to get it on there. Alright. Let's see if I can give you guys a better angle here. Notice, I got tape on uh, three sides here. Again, so it doesn't mar the hell out of the inside of uh, my nice primer paint job. All the little things help. Okay, on the hand riveting with a pneumatic squeezer. Because, you know, we're lazy. Yeah. So this worked out awesome. This is such a great tool to have, guys. Look, I can literally do this one-handed. Let's see if I get a better shot for you. It's just so good. Awesome. All right, so we got the vertical stabilizer all riveted up as far as I can go. I uh, got skipped my holes for uh, the attaching hardware, and uh, I made a mistake and I dimpled these holes. Apparently, it's a common mistake, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna get drilled right out, and. Uh, that dimple will be gone. But I did leave the rivets out of those holes. I am super pleased with how it turned out. I mean, I'll see if I can use the light here to my advantage. It's, uh, it's a pretty clean rivet line. Apart from my fingerprints. And uh, again, this is what I was replacing. So... You can kind of see uh, some of the holes were a little bit under dimpled, which is why we got big circles around all those holes. That's what under dimpling looks like. Bit of a bit of a slip right here. And uh, you know, after I got the rudder built and uh, I, I could I, I just really thought that I could do a bit of a better job and we'll see just really under dimpled all the skins and uh, you know some heavy scratches here too didn't really like but what was great about having this is before I started riveting on this guy I was able to take some of these empty holes and give myself a couple practice shots and I gotta tell you they look like shit so really glad I tried it on this. And with that being said, I think the next time I need to go rivet a major panel, I'm going to, uh, you know, give myself a bit of practice on drilling some rivets out. And uh, we'll get some more back in. And just to get you in the habit of, um, you know, riveting.
But uh, again, yeah, you know, pretty sure this is what Vans had in mind. And again, guys, that's just a little bit of blue, blue painters tape on your rivet set. And uh, I got no halo from my uh, dimpler. I actually wrap a little bit of blue tape around my dimpler as well. Uh, everything except for the actual taper is covered in blue tape to prevent, you know, that uh, the halo, the halo around your your dimple. So now that we got this guy all done and I uh, can't do anything more, I can't get the rear spar in because the inspector will have to uh, check out all those rivet lines and, uh, you know, all the spar rivet lines. There will be three he won't be able to check and that's one, two, and three that are right in there and the shop ends are kind of fit. The, the manufacturer ends facing this way. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get an inspection mirror up through here and check those guys out and that won't be a problem. So uh, the next thing I will be throwing together on my kind of weeks long holiday here, I'm going to start with the uh, getting the horizontal stabilizer together and uh, start fitting it, start getting the main spar of it all riveted up together. Keep banging those rivets guys, slowly but surely, there will be an airplane. Have a good one.